Hi, in this clip we will give review on probability theory. When we want to do uh, probabilistic analysis, we need to uh, use probability theory to to help us. Uh, when we want to talk about probability, we need to describe an experiment. And from this experiment, okay, we can observe an outcome. So let's look at some example. So suppose I have a fair coin and I toss the coin once. So I can get a head, a head or I can get a tail, right? So a set of all possible outcome is called a sample space. So sample space is set of of, of all outcome. Okay, we usually refer this to that as S sample space S, and in this case, if we have one coin my sample space would be this. Now, suppose I have two co uh, one coin and I make two coin toss. What would you get? So the sample space would be, uh, I might get two heads, the first head and a tail, a tail and uh, another head and two tails. So this is the sam sample space of two coins. Coin toss. If I, I make two coin tosses, right? Okay. Um, and when we we usually don't really wanna. Sometimes we don't wanna look at a particular outcome, but we wanna look at some interesting set of outcomes. Okay. So we call that an event. Okay, an event. An event is a subset of a sample space. All right. So in this case, uh, in this example, suppose I am interested in. Um, uh, I, 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 I I make two coin tosses and then uh, I toss the coin t twice and I would like to see um, I'm interested in the case when I have one exactly one head showing up so an event for that is this and that so that's an event okay so there are two things that you have to know one is sample space an event is a subset of a sample space and an outcome. Okay, an outcome is something that you can observe. Okay. Right. Um, now that's that's really about the outcome and the sample space. But then when we want to talk about probability, we need to define the probability distribution. Okay. So a probability, probability, probability distribution. Okay. So a, a probability distribution is is uh, is a function. Okay. We we will follow the notation from the book. So it's, it's written with P R then this curly bracket um, is is a mapping okay it's a mapping it maps an event to a real number so basically it's it's a function that say um, 
something like suppose I want one example of that is that I want to talk about like probability that I get one hit from two coin tosses. So that's uh, so this part this part is an event. Okay. Now is it uh, we cannot just you know assign um, arbitrarily um, an event to a real number, but there are some axioms of probability. Okay, so let's review that axiom of probability. Okay, so you cannot have negative probability. So the probability of any event must be at least zero. Okay? And the probability of the whole sample space must be one. Okay? And the last thing is to ensure that you can Add probability. So the probability of a union of an e two events, okay, if A and B are mutually exclusive. Uh, what is a mutually ex exclusive? So you have maybe this is S, and A is his, and B is here. So the intersection between these two events is is now okay is empty. So if A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A union B equals probability that B probability of A plus the probability of B, okay? So this, uh, so a any function PR that satisfy these three axioms of probability is called the uh, probability distribution, okay? So let's look at our, our uh, coin toss example, okay? So we have we have uh, four outcomes. Suppose we make two coin toss, uh, head, tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. Okay, and and these these are the outcome, and we usually refer to them as an event as well. So uh, the book called them elementary, elementary event. Okay, so we can. So if we don't know anything about um, the two coins, we might say, oh, okay, um, we might not be able to say uh, what is the probability that we would get two heads like that, okay? But if we have some knowledge about the experiment, we might want to say that um, every outcome is uh, equally likely to occur so we might want to say that uh, all probably of all this elementary event are the same. And from that, we know that uh, they have to some, th these are mutually exclusive events, and they have to sum up to one, right? So from that, we know that, okay, here of this is one. And from the probability axiom, we can conclude that um, probability of each outcome is one over four, right? So if we know that, okay, so if we have, if we make this assumption, then we get that, okay? Right, so, so that's, uh, that's the um, some review of the uh, 
probab probability axioms. Now, in this course, we mostly talk about um, um, discrete, discrete probability distribution. Okay, so this is when the case where um, if the sample space is uh, finite or countably infinite. In, the, in our case, um, our, uh, no, not th that, that's not true. But uh, if, if uh, the sample space are Sample space uh, is is finite. In many cases, it is finite or countably infinite. The infinite. Then um, we are in this case, and we can talk about. Um, we can define the probability of an event A to be the sum of all outcome in the event A, sum of the probability of all, all the outcome in the event A. All right. And, and, and the above thing here, example here, are, are in this case, OK? Right, so that's that's roughly the thing that we really want to know about um, basic probability theory. Um, all right, so uh, there are some other notion of uh, independence. Okay, so let's talk about it a little bit. So if we have two events, uh, A and B, and so let's look at some example first. Suppose I make, uh, so I have a, a fair coin, and I make two coin toss, coin tosses. So, um, Okay, so the first time I get hit, the second time I don't know. Okay, so the fact that we know that the first coin toss give us hit, um, does it does it give us any information on 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 what to expect here? If we have, we can observe that if we we make the first coin toss and then uh, the second coin toss is not is independent of the first coin toss. That's, that is, if, if we know anything about the first coin toss, we know nothing about the, the second coin toss. In, in that case, we would, we would say that uh, this, the, the event A, A is the event where uh, get hit in the first, coin toss and B get in the second coin toss okay we w in that case we would say that the event A and B are independent okay but if we if we don't make a coin toss like that, suppose we do something a little bit more, uh, a little bit different. So I make the first uh, coin toss. So I make the first coin toss. Suppose I get hit, and the second coin toss, I, I I don't I don't I don't actually make a coin toss. I remember the first toss that the first result that I get, and then I just flip it. Okay, so if I I got if I get a uh, hit in in the first coin toss, then I the sec my second coin toss I I just I'll just do some trick and answer uh, its its tail, and if I get the first coin toss to be tail, the second one I do some trick and I say oh it's gonna be hit, 
all right now in 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 in, in this case um, in this case suppose i in this experiment it's different from the first one so in this experiment okay let me write it here first and i get tail if i get tail the next one i get hit and in this experiment if i know that the first coin toss is hit then i know without even have to do anything i know that the second coin toss will be tail right so the information on the first coin toss give me everything i need to know the second coin toss and and in this case um uh they are dependent okay when i say dependent it doesn't have to be exactly like know the first one then i know the second one that's not not that's dependent right but you don't need that but but if if you know anything about this and then you know something about this without you know looking then th there's some dependent so there's some dependency going on okay so um, in this case if we look at this the first coin toss alone then the probability that i suppose our, our outcome are equally likely then if i look at the first coin toss and then uh, i know the second one right but if i only look at the first coin toss then the probability that i get hit is one one half if I only look at the second coin toss, then again, it's one half. So uh, knowing if, if there's only one coin, if I look at one coin, then it's look normal. But then the two coins combined together, it's not as it's, it's dependent. Okay. So let's, let's go back and, and look at the definition. Okay. So we say that event, events, a and B are independent if okay so we can focus on one of the event uh, if probability of A equals so we'll, we l let me define this uh, probability of A given B, so this is probability that probability that you get A given that given B occur. Okay. So what is this this term? So I'm, I'm I'm not done with this definition of independence, but we'll come back. Okay, so let's talk about this for for a minute. So what is this? So we know that suppose there are two events. So this is A, this is B. Now, if we know that event B is occurs, all right. So in the beginning, we talk about this, the whole sample space. But um, the probability of A given B is, is not about the whole, uh, thinking about the whole event. But it is like uh, we are focusing on this case when B occurs. OK? And we're thinking about this portion of, of the mass of the uh, probability f function. So this this is defined to be uh, the ratio between. So basically, if B occurs and A occurs, then the probability that that happened is this. But we know that B occur for sure, so we just uh, normalize it with the probability of B. So it's the ratio of the uh, red part overall everything uh, in the blue part blue, blue circle like that okay so with that with this definition okay we will we, look at example la later in class um, but with this definition in at hands we can say even a and b are independent if
if if probability of we are we have a equals the probability that we get a given b okay so if if we in this case then it is like uh whatever we know about b we know nothing about a right so the probability that we get a remains the same okay so if we come back to look at the the dependent uh example that that i talk about uh the two the, the two opposite coin toss then if we just look at the probability that we get hit in the first coin toss so that's one half but if we know but if we know that the if you know that we get the uh sorry so if you know that we the second coin toss is is so probably that get first hit given that get tail in the second one if that's the case then this is one right so the two events that you get the first hit and you get this tail in the second time is 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 not independent they are dependent okay so i think that's that's a, a quick review on on various uh, definitions of the prob probability theory so we see more of that when when we when we come back and and see more when we try to analyze the the the, the algorithms okay thank you <laughs>